Hey, welcome back guys, JC here. Today let's talk about LEDs, specifically the addressable LEDs. I'm gonna show you how to wire it in to your flight controller, whether you're just using one strip or multiple strips, as well as take you into beta flight and show you how to set them up. So first thing to know is you need addressable LEDs. What this means is they have a signal wire and this signal wire comes from your flight controller and the flight controller sends the signal to it and controls the colors of the LEDs, the flash sequences, and much more. If you have normal LEDs like this, you cannot change the color or anything. There's only a power and ground wire, and they're just going to light up one color, whatever color it is when you purchase it, and that's it. So these will not work. Now as far as wiring them, uh, a lot of guys have asked me to make videos on how to specifically wire LEDs into their fly controller, on their specific fly controller, but I'm not going to do that because it is extremely simple. Now I will make a separate video for you NAS32 users because that one is a little bit more tricky. But as far as all F3 and F4 fly controllers, it's super simple. You will have a signal pin going into, well first locate uh, your LED pins. So right here it says RGB LED. Like I said, you'll have a signal wire, a power wire, and a ground wire, and that's it. On some flight controllers, they don't have a power and ground pin right next to the signal pin, and that's fine. You can place the power wire on any 5 volt pin. So for example, any of these middle pins on the output pins, they're all 5 volts these middle pins on the input pins, they're all 5 volts. Some flight controllers even have dedicated 5 volt pins located elsewhere and you can use that. Or if nothing else, you can use a 5 volt regulator off of a PDB. And same thing goes for the ground wire. There's ground pins everywhere. Uh, just pick a random one. Now as far as wiring the LED itself, just for example on these right here, you will see ground D I N 5 volt and ground. On this side you have ground D out uh, 5 volt and ground. The N is the side that is going to your fly controller. If you're only using one strip then you will not use this side whatsoever. It's just going to go in with 5 volt and ground and that's it. As far as the second ground it doesn't matter they're all tied in together so you can pick whichever one you want. You only need one. If you're using multiple strips then you will have the signal going out to the next in and then so on and so on and then for the last one you just won't have anything on the end you can use up to 32 LEDs so these are strips of 8 times 4 meaning that gives me my maximum of 32 okay so now I've got my imaginary multi-rotor set up let's just pretend for a second I also have the LEDs wired into the flight controller and a 5 volt power source coming from a back so that way I can plug in my LiPo battery and power the uh, LEDs through the 5 volt back. Some flight controllers you don't have to plug in a LiPo battery to turn on the LEDs but even for those I'm going to recommend plugging in a LiPo battery because you'll notice after a while they'll start flickering and changing colors by themselves. Uh, it's a long explanation just go ahead and plug in a LiPo battery. Okay, so first thing we want to do is go to configuration, scroll down, make sure we have LED strip turned on, and you save. I've already done that. After that, we will go to LED strip and plug in our LiPo battery. Next, we need to order the LEDs. And if you're only using one strip, this isn't that important, but if you are using multiple strips, this is very important, at least if you want all the features. So we will click wire ordering mode and because this is the first strip, you see this wire right here is running right to my fly controller. That means this is strip number one, two, three, and four. Then out of strip number one, this is LED one, then two, three, four, all the way to eight. And this is how we need to order it. So pretending that this is the front of my multi-rotor, this is the rear, left, and right, because I have this on the rear right, that's LED number one, I will come down here. And these are separated into 16 different blocks, but because I only have eight LEDs on the rear, I will start right here and click that. And it's going to start with zero instead of number one, and that's normal, that's just how it works. 
but I'm going to come over and click this eight times, which will give me zero to seven, which is actually LEDs one to eight. Then because this wire goes from strip one to strip over two on the left side of the multi-rotor, I will continue on the left side. And then following this wire to strip number three, and we will finish up with the fourth strip and there we go and we see that I'm using all 32 LEDs I can't use any more than that okay next let's pick some colors so you can click any of these and then go to function and color and then come over here and pick whatever color you want so let's just say I want blue and then this is very tedious but it's what you gotta do okay there we go now if I hit the save button they just changed colors one thing I forgot to mention is you don't have to start with your first strip on the rear you can start anywhere you want just make sure you go in the correct order like I explained also, you don't have to have them all the same colors. Just for example, see, now I've got two red ones over there. Okay, let's change it back. Now let's talk about other functions that the LEDs can do. I won't go over absolutely all of them. You can just try them out for yourself and see what they all do, but I will go over the main ones. Okay, what does throttle do? So let's just click one of these, turn on throttle. Actually, I will turn a few of these on. Okay, I just set up the rear LED for throttle. I'm not going to do all 32 again. But with my transmitter on, and after you arm, whenever you throttle, you can actually change the colors. So if I slowly throttle up, you'll see them beginning to change. And at max throttle, they go all the way to red and it's going to change the entire time as you throttle up and down. My next tip is you can actually have more than one function on the LED. So we already have throttle on this rear row, but let's set it to blink. Okay, remember to save every time you make changes or it's not going to work. Okay, so now they are blinking and if I arm it and throttle up, they are now changing colors and blinking so we have both functions going at the same time. Okay, now I've set all of this rear row of LEDs to uh, warnings. And what this is going to do is, if there are any warnings, they will flash a different color. So uh, just to test it, let's go to configuration. Right now my battery voltage is 16.4 volts, but if I raise the warning cell voltage to, let's just say, higher than that it can be anywhere higher than that then save and reboot we're now getting that uh, flash sequence in different color change warning us that the battery is low at least it thinks it's low because right now we're tricking it but you get the idea and like I said you can have this on all of them I just don't feel like doing it 32 times now what I've done is set the indicator on the two end LEDs on every strip. Then if we save, okay, what this is going to do is if you move your pitch or roll, then these are going to act like turn signals. So if I go left, then the left side will blink. Also notice that I'm barely going left right now and they're going slow, but the more and more you uh, roll to the left, they're going to flash faster and faster. Then if I go right, slow and fast if you go forward and if you go backwards so you get the idea okay next if we click the drop down box for function again then you'll see many other things you can do now what I've done is set the middle LEDs to modes and orientation I left the two N LEDs on each strip to uh, color with the indicator just to show you that you can have many different functions going on at the same time and really 
uh, make each individual LED do exactly what you want it to do. Now, I, I don't think modes and orientation is going to do anything right now. I mean, the, the colors will change as I change my flight modes, but as far as orientation, I, I want to say you have to have a magnetometer for that. I, I could be wrong. I, I honestly don't know. I don't use LEDs in, in real life, but that would be my guess. But we see that they do change with the flight modes. Now I've changed all the middle uh, four LEDs on each strip to arm state. And what this is going to do is uh, they'll be green when it's disarmed. And then once I arm it, they change back to the color that I place them on. Okay, and for the grand finale, I have now set all 32 LEDs to the ring mode. When it's disarmed, it's going to leave a space in between each LED. Then once I arm it, you get a nice little ring. And like I said, you can combine this with the indicator, which is the little turn signals. So that's pretty neat. Then once you disarm it, it goes back to that. And that's pretty much going to do it, guys. You can do even more than that. I just want to keep this video relatively short. I already know it's too long. But that is how you use LEDs. So that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. I will see you again soon.